The Game Maker's Toolkit Jam is back for 2021 and it's time to get weird. I find this game jam in particular is ripe for experimentation, making things that you would never try otherwise. I'm currently developing this in Unity and the idea was to implement dragging and dropping of different regions of a platformer puzzle that can be rearranged to create links between them and allow the player to transition from one to the other. You can move within your original box but are stuck inside of it until you drag and drop a new area that can seamlessly connect to it, allowing you to move between the two. The theme of Linked Together was too perfect to not attempt this, so I hope I slept well last night because I won't be doing that again anytime soon. First up, I need to make a little prototype to see if moving inside of colliders is even possible. Usually colliders work by stopping an external game object from entering, but can they be configured to stop an internal game object from leaving it? If we can't, then we're gonna need a new idea fast. I started by making a blank scene, get it, to go about testing my idea in. I added a box with a box collider and another box with another box collider to see if I can put the box with a box collider inside the other bigger box with the other box collider. Does it work? Oh, well, no? Not by default anyway, it's a bit more complicated than I would have hoped. You see, for all 2D colliders bar one, a completed shape is made. This means that inside the bounds of this shape is just full of gubbins that the rigid body is just repelled from immediately. Luckily for me earlier though, I do believe I said all colliders bar one. Let me introduce the edge collider component. This lovely little guy doesn't create shapes, but as the name suggests, it creates edges, lines, things with no inside, just things. This is exactly what we need because there's no restriction on what can be placed in or outside of them because there is no inside of them. They're just lines living in their own little world. Now onto the meat of this idea, combining regions. Upon duplicating the original box and giving it a test, an obvious issue arises because the colliders can't speak to each other and know where they are. If only one of the colliders I tried earlier was made specifically for the function of combining multiple colliders into some sort of composite. Shame that doesn't exist. Thanks for watching guys. Hope Unfortunately, getting the points from a composite collider isn't as easy as getting them from a polygon collider as there is no dot points attribute. Luckily for me, in a recent project of mine, I also needed to grab points from a composite collider, so uh, instead of figuring out how to do that again, I'm just going to steal from myself to give to myself. Rejiggering around the code to use composite colliders, we now have multiple boxes and it works. They work when connected together and when pulled apart, yielding some very wonderfully unexpected results so soon into this development that I would say our little proof of concept prototype has worked. We can now go full steam into full development. Now this is where things are going to get interesting. First up I saw in the previous video clip that the collisions with the box while it is moving aren't the smoothest in the world. While we think up a solution to this, let's add some features requested by our game designer Emin Space. She suggested platforms that you could give a custom end location to, a time taken to get there, and a time it waits at its destination before returning back to its original position. <sighs> Using the transform.domove, I can give the box exactly the properties I just mentioned, a target destination and a time taken to get there. The only problem with this, however, is that it doesn't automatically go back to its original position. To fix this, I can implement a doTween sequence. A sequence is where you can chain loads of tweens together and then play them back as if it's just one tween. I create the sequence when the game loads, firstly sending the box to the destination, then waiting for an interval of the number of seconds we set in the inspector, finally returning to the original position once that time has passed. You will see, however, even though I'm very much still pressing space, the tween doesn't play again. To fix this, I need to disable auto kill for the tween, and instead of playing it when we press space, we need to replay it or restart it. I'm a happy little box doing happy little box there. Oh my god! We're gonna be nice with our level design. So definitely no trap doors, not a single secret cage in sight, and most importantly, we definitely won't include any slow and painful deaths either. Okay, maybe one or two. Hundred. M instead asked me if I can use my time more wisely and implement wall jumping. I can grab the vertices of the player and then use them to draw a box just below their feet. Just to confirm I had the coordinates correct, I sent them through a polygon collider. No matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't get this collision detection to work. I have made a few games in my past, so not being able to do something as elementary as this wore me down quite a bit until I realised just why it wasn't working. The player isn't colliding anything. Any typical collision detection script is going to fire off as true all the time because the player is always within a collider. <laughs> well I did say no typical collision detection script would work, right? Actually I did, I remember saying that. Any typical collision detection script Well, I am one very little atypical robot, so let me show you how I did it. 
What I ended up doing was getting the points of the collision, which for some reason did work, seeing how close they are to the bottom corners of the player, which would typically represent the bottom side. If it's within a threshold of 0.075 units, we claim we are on the ground, which then resets the jump cap. It's by no means perfect, but it works, so I guess it's perfect enough? The goal you need to reach to beat the puzzle is a wire because the theme of this jam is linked together, and lines do be loving to link things together, just how I like to link to this video's sponsor. After adding wall jumping, I added a switch that can be pressed to trigger the box movement developed earlier and threw everything together into a demo scene that our wonderful level designer can reference to conjure up their magic. That's day two over with, don't film me now teammates, we can bring this one home tomorrow. I got the platform disappearing once again using Dotween here, as it has been a kind friend of me this day vlog. By adding an oncomplete method to activate and deactivate the box colliders too, the fading platform is now working. Let's hope for no big issues today, <laughs> guys we can do that right? Just gotta make a menu, add scene transitions, add music, make and add sound effects, make enough levels for the game to last more than 10 seconds like my previous scam jam, Slippery Rocketry, we don't talk about that one, test any errors, make and upload the itch page, and most importantly try not to fall asleep. The team and I are really happy with how this game turned out, so if you want to see all the amazing bonus features and the levels for the first time, the way they were intended, then go and play the game for yourself before I go and run through it for you. You have been spoiler warneringed for everyone else. Let me present. Seamless, I'm so happy to present this to you guys. Look at that amazing fade effect, and we're in. Okay, so we have a timer counting down, and I want to see who can get the, uh, the best time. I think Sidfish is currently in the lead, so I, I reckon someone can beat him now. I think I can probably beat him now. You can sort of jump forever on here, but as you can see the bottom left corner off the square is actually colliding with something, it's just not the floor, it's uh, it's the wall at the side, so the jump is still being triggered because of the way I had to do it to work around the colliders, but you know what, it's fine. As you can see the goal here is the little piece of string, don't ask why, it made sense at the time. <laughs> so we're currently stuck in this little box and we have absolutely no hope of going anywhere, so uh, that's the game over, hope you've enjoyed, we're stuck. But as you can see, this little area here, it sort of eats up the other platform and delivers you over here. We now can't go back, but we made it to the end. Same story here, but this time we have spikes. Now these spikes don't move with the box, which I find really interesting. They sort of reveal the path, not only making it so you can see it because it's all the same one big color, but also so you can pass through it. And I must say, I still absolutely love this whole eating up walls mechanics, the joining together of different sections. I've, uh, I've never seen it before. And I really hope we can turn it into something that you guys enjoyed. So this is where the levels start getting a bit more complicated. You can see at the top we have a switch. We also have to try and time this jump correctly. Because if we don't time this jump correctly, we're just stuck in this little box down here. We've got nowhere to go. And if we jump up here, we still have nowhere to go. But if you jump up and the platform moves up and catches you, it can kind of drag you up with it, which is just really clever. This is sort of, this idea came from when we had the cage idea earlier. So we had the cage, where as I showed you, it was like a troll potential earlier, where the block came down and removed the floor from you. Well, this time we did sort of the complete opposite and it takes the top away from you so you can escape instead of being taken, you know, to your death. The next level introduces these disappearing platforms. Obviously, you don't want to stand on them for too long because they will disappear and you will die over and over and over again. So you have to sort of leap over as quick as you can, make sure you get there. Here's a little pro tip. You press the switch, the platform comes up, which allows you to get to the end. Oh wow, I actually just found a bug. <laughs> It doesn't allow you to get to the end. Wow, we just got absolutely. <laughs> uh, let's just pretend that didn't happen. Okay, this is this is where the speed run sort of comes into it. Hope you don't mind dying. Press the switch. Get on out of here. So we sort of got like a sideways elevator, like a lift. Now uh, we also have some platforming ability which I clearly do not possess. I love how you sort of jump off the wall and land on the switch. I feel like our game designer, Emin Space, probably planned that on purpose. But yeah, I would not be smart enough to do that. Oh, almost died there, but we made it. Okay, final level. Now, the one thing I do say about this is that I really want to get more levels. If the game does well, then hopefully we can, uh, we can keep working on this because this mechanic 
is probably the first mechanic I've come up for a good game jam that I really strongly believe needs further exploration. Um, we've got loads of amazing feedback about it being really unique and people loving it already. And the way I implemented it here is pretty much just a, it's good enough, just get it done. We have two days. I've already thought of far better ways to do it, especially after speaking to some of my other game dev friends and how they would have approached it. Yeah, they're a lot smarter than I am, but I was under time pressure, that's one. That's my excuse. So as you can see here, this is my absolute favourite section of the entire game. I really, really, really love this. So as you saw earlier for the trolls, once again, the joke's coming back and actually helping us out with some level design here. So we have the player, and if, if you try and make this jump and you miss and you get stuck in this little box, well, you can't go back, you're completely encaged, and... You have to just get hit by the spikes, there's absolutely nothing you can do. So you have to jump into that box to be able to wall jump up to the other side, but you need to do it fast enough to not get stuck in the box and hit by the spikes. It's absolutely genius. The person that came up with that, M in space, is a level design master. I absolutely love it. So we just have to sort of wait here, come up, and get to the goal. 332, I think that puts me on the leaderboard, I think that puts me on the leaderboard, thanks for playing. No, thank you guys for playing. 